Hello again, everyone. This is Ken Kibler, Director of Training and Client Business Support. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, the uh, attendee list is still growing, so we're going to sit tight for another minute. If you appreciate your patience, and uh, hopefully the attendee list will level off here shortly and we will get going. All right, looks like uh, the attendee list has leveled off. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, uh, <clears throat> where we'll cover some of our normal topics as well as go into some uh, details uh, about the importance of developing a budget and an operational plan to help you succeed as Network uh, 2.0 accelerates uh, very briskly uh, as we turn the calendar into 2025. So without further ado, I'll turn this over to Jeff Walzak. As always, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat or the Q&A so we can get to those uh, and answer them accordingly. Jeff? So thanks for being here for a little bit this morning. And we need to remind you, as always, that eTruck Biz is not endorsed, sponsored, approved, or otherwise affiliated with FedEx Corporation. Every week, we start with the volume trends. And do we have a little good news this week? Well, maybe we do. It looks like there's a little life over on the pickup side. That's good stuff there. Pickup packages. All right. It's not great, but it's better than it was so that's good about on the delivery side <clears throat> look at that delivery stops way up there in fact i can't see that i think it is that might be the best this year there we go so if that's the case that's pretty damn good news uh packages kind of falling behind a little bit but still we'll take it <clears throat> so that's good some good stuff there so how did we handle it from a productivity standpoint? You would think we did okay. Uh, remember, FedEx is looking for proficiency. We said that many times. So here we go. Routes dispatched. Ouch. It's up there. Actually record for the year. Uh, we want to call this maybe peak eve. But, okay, we didn't make it back to the tre tre uh, trend line, but... At least we were headed in the right direction. That's good. That's good. Maybe this dip is hiring folks for peak, trying to get some people ready for action, and maybe we're starting to get a little more efficient overall. Hopefully that's the case. That's good. And then as always, we want to ask the question, how many stops do you have on the road today? How many know? How many stops per dispatch do you have on the road today, right? <clears throat> Who's watching it? Do you know? Do you know how many you have? Do you know what your easy number is? The easy number is the average number of stops per dispatch you need to achieve your financial plan. Where do I see my easy number? Right there in the dashboard of your system after you have gone through what we'll talk about at the end of the presentation here in a little bit. And if you don't have an easy number, what's it costing you? Right? So, does FedEx calculate your easy number for you? No, they don't. In fact, do they provide any kind of budget or expense plan for you? Nope. Are they gonna? No. Nope. How are you supposed to know what what your what you should be expected to spend on your different categories of stuff. Make it up, can, but 
<clears throat> if you want to plan, we'll show you how to get one here after a while. So stay tuned. Okay, in the news, and there's a little bit of news. Um, so there's actually some big news coming from UPS on Thursday of this week. What's going on Thursday? Well, UPS gets rare sell call on rising competition from Amazon and FedEx. And then a parcel service received a rare sell recommendation on Barclays as Barclays expressed concern on the shipping giant's earnings at a third quarter results later this week. Analyst Brandon Oglensky downgraded the land-based company to underweight from equal weight, noting likely near-term risk to earnings from continued weakness in parcel demand as well as long-term challenges stemming from the potentially smaller relationship with Amazon and more competition from rival FedEx Corp. Uh, <clears throat> Long-term pressures from Amazon, non-union FedEx competition, and limited dividend growth paint a relatively tough outlook for UPS shares. The shares in UPS fell 3.4% Monday, and their biggest one-day drop in nearly three months. The stock now has a 17-buy equivalent recommendation, 14 holes and three sells. With an average price target of 145, shares are down 16% this year. Oops, wrong way. UPS's coming third quarter earnings report on Thursday follows last month's disappointing print from rival FedEx, which warned investors that its business would slow in the year ahead. Both companies had struggled with expedited shipping with more cu customers switching to slower delivery options to save money. Okay. So that's actually good for us here in our, where we're, you know, if it's good for the ground SPs, if you want to call it that, or uh, CSPs, it's, actually, it's a good thing. And that might be where we're watching the volume. We just went through the volume <clears throat> for the year. For the most part, it's been above trend, and it looks like that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the expedited side, so air packages, instead of going air to going ground, and maybe from UPS, who seems to be struggling. So that's actually some good stuff. FedEx also presents a challenge to UPS in the long term. Oglinsky flagged the merged express and ground operations, creating risk that could limit the value of UPS shares. Well, who would have thought that? Investors should consider future comp competition from a merged FedEx, U.S. Express and Ground <clears throat> non-union operation, potentially ri rivaling or exceeding productivity of UPS. Now, oh my God, how potentially ri rivaling or exceeding productivity of UPS, which will be constrained on a relative basis by union work rules, as well as contracted wages and benefits, he added. Well, oh man. Oops, backwards again. Don't go backwards, go forward. So this is the bet everybody's making. And I don't mean everybody, us, I mean, Wall Street. I mean, folks that are driving the stock price up to 250, 260, 300 bucks, the FedEx stock price. At first, they said, well, can, <clears throat> can ground contractors handle this? And at first, yes, it was a bit of a struggle. But once the bet is once the ground folks get their act together, which they will, they always do, it could be that the ground side of things or the new FedEx could exceed the productivity of UPS. Think of that. Big time, big time. And there you go with UPS's stock price. This is yesterday. I don't know how it's doing today. It might have come back. Who knows? I didn't look. But um, 
they're they're not doing too well, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Many of you already know we have been offering a standard budget. We've been offering standard budget and financial plan sessions, right? We just said FedEx doesn't do this for you. They're not going to do it for you, right? We've been having these sessions, and quite honestly, we've been very, very busy, especially since the show, since the FedEx show in Orlando, uh, doing these for folks. And it's been very, very eye-opening for everybody. So why is it important that we do this? By virtue of the unique contractual relationship FedEx has with its service providers, FedEx Corporation cannot manage the manner, method, or means of how service providers achieve the contracted results, right? Which means they don't necessarily provide operations training, right? They provide operations results management. If you don't make 99, then they're going to ask you why you didn't make 99 or 98.5, whatever you want to whatever yardstick you want to use there, but they're not going to tell you how to do it. They might kind of sort of tell you, but it's up to you to figure it out, right? They don't do any business planning for you. Never have, never will. And especially the thing they don't do the most and will never do is they're not going to provide you any kind of financial guidance. And they're, they're, the list of reasons for that are, are numerous, but they're not going to do that, right? So for the most part, you're on your own when it comes to financial things. So, the, um, well, anyways, you're on your own, especially when it comes to financial guidance. <clears throat> so as part of, if you get one of these, and uh, do one of these consulting sessions with us, um, what we're going to do is there's three things I'm going to show you here. The first thing is we're going to develop a standard operating budget for your particular CSA or your particular operation, right? A lot of people have asked, well, what's, what is that? What is that? Well, first of all, it's tremendously important because if you have a budget or you know where you're supposed to be going, you can make informed decisions about what you should be dispatching, you know, whether or not you're doing it the right way or you're doing it, how you should be doing it. At least you hit, know where you're going to try to go, right? So it helps you make informed decisions. It helps you man, uh, measure performance, of course. How am I doing versus the budget? And then it helps you establish and achieve goals. So how much money am I supposed to make? Well, a lot. Okay, well, <clears throat> how much is a lot? What's the number? What am I doing? It gives you a benchmark of what FedEx thinks the standard operating expenses in a CSA are. I'll bet you, um, well, it just, how can you know? You don't know. But they do have, a, they do have, especially as you go through negotiation, they do have, and that's how they do your negotiation, is they, they expect you to spend a certain amount on, on things we're going to show you here in a second, right? But how do you know what that is? Well, we do. So if you get, this is an example of a standard operating budget. So the first thing is you've got an estimated revenue, again, coming from your negotiation. So in this case, let's just take one that was about $2 million as far as estimated revenue. In this particular case, and all of these are different, but in this particular case, for this CSA, we know that FedEx expects 44.49% of this CSA's revenue to be spent on labor, right? And this is the dollar amount over here. In this particular case, FedEx would expect 9.57% to be spent on fuel, 6.3% on maintenance, workers' comp insurance, and on down the list so that we get an operating expense of 69.35% of your revenue, okay? Now, operating expenses are expenses you got to incur to generate a dollar of revenue, 
right? So if you don't buy fuel, you, trucks don't go anywhere. They can't deliver any packages. <clears throat> now, there's another group of expenses called general and administrative expenses. These are expenses that they're necessary, but they don't generate any revenue. So same thing here. They would expect you to spend these amounts or the, these percentages of your revenue on these uh, particular items. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's not what my accountant says. Right. Your accountant has their particular chart of accounts that they use for who knows what they afford. I mean, your accountant, like uh, some of you might have an accountant that does several transportation companies, but Except for the CF, the CPAs that are affiliates of ours, nobody has a standard chart of accounts. Well, if you made a standard chart of accounts for all FedEx folks, this is basically what it would look like, right? And we can do this because, well, you'll see here in a little bit. But anyway, they, this is what they would expect you to spend on the uh, general and administrative side. So then you'd have a total of in this case, 81.03% of your revenue should be spent on both classes of expenses, giving you an EBITDA of about 18.97%, it's $380,000. They also budget, if you wanna look at it that way, uh, some capital investment or costs or debt service, if you wanna look at it that way, they think you can spend 7% of your revenue on SBA loans, truck payments, that kind of thing. In this case, it's $140,000. So at the end of the day, they think from the revenue generated, in this case, 11.97% should fall to the bottom line, which is about $240,000, right? Okay, that's what we would call a standard operating budget. <clears throat> Again, the standard operating budget comes from your negotiation information. That's how we know what your budget should be, right? It's the basis for all your financial planning. So I don't know if those of you that try to do this yourself, if I don't know if this is how you do that, but that's this is how it goes. We need to figure out what FedEx thinks they're going to pay you, right? The question is, are they paying you enough? 99 out of 100 times, everybody's going to say, no, that's not enough. But okay, that's great. But that's what they are paying. So we got to try to figure out how to operate based on what their standards, their operating standards, all their different things, their standards are, right? And then on the other side of this, we would end up using this for the next negotiation, right? So when you guys get Carrie to help you with your negotiations, this is something that she does. She doesn't really show you this, but she figures out what uh, FedEx thinks you should spend on different things. And that's that's part of the whole negotiation um, service. Okay, we can do this. This is only possible because Ms. Carrie has done thousands and thousands of negotiations. <clears throat> this isn't some thing you just pull stuff out of the sky. We know because she has the data from all the negotiations she's done. Plus, 10 years of specific financial and operational data. We have a very, very large database now of everything FedEx ground, FedEx, you name it. It's probably outside of FedEx, it's got to be one of the be biggest and best uh, data sets that exists out there. And then we also have the real-time API connection with FedEx, which also helps us put together how it puts together, put together the budget and what we're going to show you here in a minute, the expense management plan. So there's another, so first you have a budget. What do they think you should be spending? Doesn't matter if we agree with it or not. It's what the budget is. That's what they are paying. Okay. Then we take their budget and we come up with a expense plan or a spending plan. This is used to derive your spending targets and goals from the standard budget, right? So what do we mean by this? We wanna take the budget and adjust the budget for what, <clears throat> what we're actually spending or what, what we really need to spend, right? 
Now, we don't want to just do this willy-nilly. We want to try to stay at budget as much as we can. But if there's any number of things that you wouldn't agree with FedEx that, you know, this is not my, I can't, I have to spend more than this or, or sometimes less. You know, sometimes we see that we see people, they budget a certain amount for workers' comp, and some folks are actually doing better than the budget. So we would adjust the budget for our expense plan accordingly. We'll show you that here in a second. So this is what the expense plan might look like for this particular uh, budget that we looked at here in a, a second ago. So remember, we were at 44.47% total uh, labor as a percent of revenue. Well, let's, for whatever reason, say we that's just too low. We can't do that. We're not going to be able to do that. So we can adjust this. And in this particular case, we did. We adjusted this up to 43.66%. Why? Because, I mean, in your case, and if we go through this um, exercise with you, we'll do it based on what you have going on. But in this case, we just made up 43.66%, which gets us up to 4766 which is still pretty good. And then, of course, this adjusts the amount from 891000 to 955 that we are planning on spending. So here's what FedEx thinks we should spend. But here's what we're going to plan on spending. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. <clears throat> Same thing with fuel, maybe. Who knows? You could spend less on fuel, not usually, but uh, we want to adjust that. And then we would do that for all the rest of these categories. And in this case, we didn't do it because I didn't want to get too crazy. But uh, but we adjusted up from 69% for operating expenses, up from 69 to 73.36% as a plan. Plan our plan for what we're going to spend, right? Okay, same thing on the uh, G&A side. You'd adjust for actual situations. I didn't do any adjusting here just to make it simple. Um, I will say one of the things we are seeing a lot of, um, and this is just a thought provoking comment I'm gonna make, we're, we're definitely seeing uh, a lot of folks are heavy with BCs. So, and there's some argument about this, but uh, at least I think the general rule of a BC to dispatch ratio should be one BC per 14 dispatches. Okay. So let's say I'm dispatching 14 trucks and I have two BCs, which we're finding a lot of folks have extra BCs for whatever reason. And that you can, you can do it. It's just going to be your over budget, of course, right? Especially over what FedEx thinks you should be doing. So anyway, as you would adjust the standard plan, or not the standard, the expense plan, we would be, uh, let's see here. So as we adjust the plan, now our planned owner's benefit is less than what FedEx thinks we should be at, but, but now we finally have a plan, right? What are we gonna spend? If we want this amount of owner's benefit, I mean, we want this amount, but we just said, no, we, we, we're spending more for whatever reason. Okay, so we're going to plan on this particular amount of owner's benefit, right? Now, the question is, how do we get there? <clears throat> That's what the easy number is all about. Your easy number re reduces the complexity of running a P&D operation down to one simple goal. So for the most part, what does FedEx want? They want service, right? So they, for the most part, reduce what they want. They give you a goal, 98, 5, 99% uh, on-time service or or local inbound service, whatever the hell you want to call it today, real service, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, th that's the number they want you focusing on, that number. Why? Because if you're focusing on that number, that's what people try to achieve is that one number. <clears throat> Same thing on the, so you should, as a business owner, you should have a number that you're focusing on to try to accomplish your financial goal, right? 
how many, you know, I'm, let's just as a rhetorical question here, how many of you have that number that you know, right? You, you think it might be whatever, well, I tried to do this. Okay, that's fine. That's good. But where does that number come from? That number needs to come from your, your expense plan, right? I want to get to that owner's benefit number. So I got to, okay, that's great. I got to get to that number. So that means I have to do, I have to achieve the easy number. So when you achieve your easy number, that's how you get your planned owner's benefit, right? Owner's benefit's another way of saying net margin, profitability, whatever you want to call the bottom line number, right? And then, like we said, like service, it should be focused on every single day. So as we go through this exercise, there's you wind up with a planned easy number. With the, this planned easy number here, is 4.9 stops per dispatch above the uh, budgeted easy number. And that's so that we can get to this number. So when we look at, so if we, if we achieve that particular easy number, we should make that owner's benefit, right? <clears throat> Pretty easy, right? Easy, no problem. Well, it's just not that easy. Now, one of the places to follow this is the dashboard of your boss system. For those of you that know, no, that's good. But for those of you that don't, this is the dashboard. This is when you log into your eTruck Biz software. You'll see a whole bunch of things about your operation. But the first thing up here is what's my easy number? Remember, my easy number is if I'm going to make any money, I've got to get here. This number, we're telling you in real time, based on real time data from FedEx, this is how many stops per dispatch you get out on the road, right? So if this is the case, if this is what's going on here today, I'm not going to make any money today. It's just how it is. Now, okay, there might be a zillion reasons and reasons why. But if I'm going to win in this game, if I'm going to have a successful business, I got to get to here. Right? I got to figure out how to get here. That's what a bunch of the things we're going to show you here in a minute. And I'm not trying to tell you it's easy. We sit here every Tuesday and everything is easy. Just do this. Just do that. Well, we know it's not that easy. However, there are things you can do to get closer to your easy number, right? Well, easy right now. If you can, if you can, if you can be, if you're able to focus on it. So what you want to be able to do, get to your easy number, you need to get your team focusing on revenue producing tasks, right? We had this discussion a week or two ago. If you, if you spend time and focus or any effort at all on non-revenue producing tasks, guess what you're going to find out? You're going to find out you're not making your easy number. Or if you're making your easy number, maybe you could be doing better. You can, there's nothing, nobody's saying you can't do better than your easy number. We have to focus on revenue producing tasks, right? How do we do that? That's what we've been talking about for weeks now. It's the business support system. <clears throat> this is how you grow in Network 2.0. We want to, we'll focus on all these things in these programs to take your, to enable you to focus on revenue producing tasks. How many stops do I have in a truck? How do I get stops for dispatch up? You don't do that when you're doing all these admin things or some of these other things that are in these programs, right? The business support system enables elimination of non-revenue producing activities. That's how you do this. And as this business gets more complicated, this is going to become more and more important. So again, for a limited time, uh, we can we, we're doing this for folks. We've been doing it. <laughs> we're very actually very busy doing this. 
um, every day. Uh, we want to give you a free budget and easy number. Um, it's and again, all this is customized for your CSA. This isn't a. This isn't just. I mean, this is actually very valuable information we're giving you. Uh, it, to do this again, you make an appointment with Becca. Uh, that's how you get in touch with Becca. And Becca, if you're on here, what is it when somebody wants? If hopefully you can get on here, Becca, are you on here? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. Um, everybody. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add in that if you book a session, um, you'll pick a date and time on the calendar and everything, and I will be in touch with you because we cannot create this report unless we have this data. So we're going to need the last three weeks of your gross payroll data. Um, and then there is some information that we're going to need from your MyGround Biz account that I can show you exactly how to get to that. Um, I can send you a screenshot of what exactly we're looking for, but we cannot create the report without that handy. So um, just keep in mind that I will be contacting you after you book this so that we can get this going for you and have that created by the time your session is here. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> so you guys, it's real important that if you don't know, a, a wise man once said, if you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. Who said that? Anybody know? I cannot name that quote. That was Yogi Berra, I think. If you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. So that's the question I've got is if you don't know where you're going, how do you know where you're going? Well, we need to do the best we can. I, I get that, but what's that number right so let's see if we have any questions and that, that kind of rolls into the first question it says the problem is the package size has increased dramatically in terms of percentage of total less room on the truck and employee turnover okay that still doesn't say do i have a plan and and once again that plan is going to come from your contract and if you can't get to that easy number or those plan number of stops that you need for your business to get that plan 12% return or goal 18% return, what do you need to do? Is it a contractual problem or is it an operational problem? If it's a contractual problem, then what do I do? I go to FedEx and I have my numbers in a row. I have them lined up and I show this is what I can do. Not what I think I can do or, well, the packages are too big, so I can't do that. You have to have your numbers in a row. And once again, it's got to be based off of your actual results. If they're not good, you, you know, what can I do to improve them? But compared to that contract, the one number that FedEx will give you in a negotiation is the plan number of dispatches. Okay, they will give you that plan number of dispatches. Now, is that for their average volume per week or is that just what they say? Okay, this many dispatches in a month, in a week. So it really doesn't give you that easy number that we can give you and, and then to track. So once again, if you can't, you know, if you have a plan and we give you that easy number and you can't get there, you have to evaluate why. Is it a contractual thing or is it all the package size? You, you know, and if the packages are too big, are my trucks full? Am I sending out a P1200 with 300 cube on it and saying it's full? And if you try that with FedEx, they're going to say that P1200 is not full with 300 cube on it. I mean, it was the most animated discussion of all the breakout sessions of at the FedEx summit. So uh, you, you've got to be able to say, if I've only got 300 cube on here, what can I do to get more, more on there? And once again, that starts with planning. So I plan the right amount of work on the truck. So that's a DRO. And then I have to teach the proper methods. So once again, if you're working on those revenue producing things, we can help you with the non-revenue non producing things, but do your managers know the methods? If not, we can help you with the OPP program with that. Uh, 
a long time in the industry. I don't want to say how many years because I'll feel really old. And But a, a lot of years in the industry, I know the methods. And we know how to set the DRO so you can get to that number. But if you still can't get to that easy number, then we got a contractual problem and we can help you with that as well, too. Okay. So, uh, wait a minute. So, uh, I'm not trying to tell you, and we're not trying to tell you that there's not big packages out there. Guess what? There are. <laughs> I had a guy felt so strongly about his big packages. He made a video recently and he went through his truck and he was taking, I don't want to embarrass him. I would, otherwise I'd show it on here because we're all friends on this one, on this particular mm -hmm. webinar. Maybe we will show it, but he's walking up and down the truck showing a pretty well sorted truck. And then he says, of course, my driver had to sort this truck and okay, good. But guess what happened? He's showing about three, maybe 400 cube on a 1200 and saying, there's just no way I can get any more packages on. And he's right. His shelves were full and under the shelves, there's packages there too. But by the fact that he's walking up and down the middle of his truck, taking a movie of everything, there's cubic air that he's transporting now. So that's that counts, right? Um, so we can sit there all day long. Well, it doesn't work that way. Uh, that's what they're saying, right? They're not going to. It's And another thing, one more thing, and then we know there's big packages. We know there's whatnot. But... The bottom, you you guys are business owners. You're complaining, complaining, voicing concerns to FedEx. And they're, I'm sure they're valid concerns. Got it. But they're not going to pay you. They, they're going to pay you what they're going to pay you. It's been tried. The 50 cent of stop thing's been tried. You name it, whatever you want to say, it's been tried. They're going to pay you what they think you can make money off of. And by the way, we have lots of clients that do very well in this business. So it can be done. Being the victim, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. It, that's not going to help you. What's going to help you is focusing on seeing what you can do to increase your easy number. But there's got to be something, right? And I don't mean to be Jeff the jerk. But that's just what it is. You, it's you have you get to do the best you can with the revenue that you're going to generate, right? There's a lot of things in this business you don't have. You don't have receivables. You don't have sales. You don't have marketing. A whole bunch of stuff you don't have to spend money on. Worry, worry about. <clears throat> I know it doesn't make it any easier, but that's what you got to do. You guys got to see what best you can do with the hand you're dealt. Okay. There you go. So I've been waiting five months to get the recognition. They keep saying they're working on it. Uh, Steve, I would continue to push data to them every single week. Uh, if you could show what your weekly expenses are to them uh, every week, I think that will go a long way. Uh, if you don't follow up every month, uh, they're going to ignore you. So that's why I'd say I'd move it to a weekly, you, you know, this was my revenue. These are my expenses. This are my average stops per dispatch. This is my average revenue per dispatch. Here are my on-road hours. Guess what? FedEx is going to look at the on-road hours. You, you, Jeff, Jeff had a slide here about they feel that FedEx contractors can achieve or surpass the productivity of UPS drivers. Well, your, and your drivers might hustle more than UPS drivers. I've yet to see a UPS driver uh, at a brisk pace in the last five years. They 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 stroll along, uh, but the one thing they do, they stay on the road for nine hours. And are their packages as big? Probably not. But are they on the road nine hours doing 20 stops an hour for nine hours? Simple math tells you that's 180 stops, okay? Because they're on the road nine hours. If that guy was only on the road seven hours, guess what? He'd only do 140 stops. So 
the analysts are saying the FedEx contractors can exceed the productivity of UPS. They're going to be easy? Nope, certainly not. But having a plan and having your drivers and trucks on the road long enough to achieve that plan is absolutely critical. Back to large packages, having issues with big packages in the DRO and trying to fill the trucks, sending less trucks out as I can when stops are low, but the size of the ICs are insane, less room, more turnover. Uh, yes, some of that is absolutely true, but do you have a plan and is it an achievable plan? As Jeff showed in the report that you get, you basically get the model and then what can you achieve? I think that's that's important. And then, you know, you have to show FedEx what you can achieve and it's got to be realistic. And you could say, yeah, my trucks are full. But if you show them a video of a full truck that you're walking down the aisle, they're going to say that's not a full truck. Uh, I've, I've said on before, you, you know, you will have stops out of the back of the truck. If your DRO is set up with the dynamic anchors, is your driver delivering it in that order? Are they delivering all the 1000s and 1500s first, then dropping down to the 2000s? Because if your driver is trying to deliver that truck out of order, he's got to have an aisle. If he's going to go from 1000 to 7000, guess what? That driver has to have an aisle to get back there unless that's coming out of the back door. And preferably, you want your backdoor stops to be, of course, some very big stuff, but also some bulk stops. You, you know, uh, back or early RPS days, I was normally about 2.2 pieces per stop. Most of the time we're seeing right now, it's about 1.6 pieces per stop. Okay. So anything to add to that, Jeff? I can. Yeah. Uh, oh, yep. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, also, too, you know, that's what the dynamic anchors do. They help you distribute and and keep those trucks where they're not overflowing. You know, the dynamic anchors, you know, they're scary to use if you haven't used them before, but, but they're working. Another thing too, do you have the right trucks in the right spot? I'm down here in Huntsville working with a with a CSP and you know, we were looking at one truck, and it's eh, it's pretty full. We look in the one next door, and it's got lots of space, but they're two different sizes. I'm like, what if we flip those two trucks? Well, it's just not that easy. Well, yes, it is. You put them in the – you pull in this parking spot tomorrow, you pull in this one. You're driving this one, you're driving this one. You know? And, and do we have the right size? You know, back when COVID hit, the transits, FedEx, they hooked you guys up with all kinds of transit deals. Well, if we're still running a transit and we're running less than, you know, 100 miles, we're in the wrong truck. We need, uh, you know, the, the P1000s, the P1200s. That's, you know, that's probably where the, uh, could be a big key to, to, you know, quite a few operations. Do we have the right size truck for our operation? One more thing, a couple more things. Well, you're not going to get any argument from me that if they're going to, that, that should definitely be a settlement charge, should be something for the cubic square foot that you've been tendered. You're not going to get an argument from me. I think that's fair. I think they charge their customers for it, so why don't they pass that along? I think there's an issue of the accuracy of that so, but that doesn't make it okay. Yeah, you, there's big packages going on your trucks. You're right. And guess what? They're going to keep going on your trucks because guess why? They make a lot of money from those packages. I just think <clears throat> they should do a better. I agree with you. I think they should do a better job of compensating contractors for that. But, but that's not going to that's not going to change our situation. Our situation is we have to do the best we can with what we got and. One of the other ways to do that is the third program in the business support system is the expense management program. We haven't said much about that yet because it's fairly new, but 
when you want to approach FedEx, we want to do it. I mean, guess what? When you tell them you got big packages, I think they already know that. They've heard that once before. What they don't know is that you're armed with your expense data, your real expense data. It really costs you this to do what you do. And when you can demonstrate that to them, um, I think you're going to find that. I mean, it's one, they actually ask you some of that at negotiation time. And some folks go way out of their way to produce something for FedEx. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But if you've got some good expense information that can only help you when it comes to negotiation time, as well as managing your business. So there you go, Ken. Yeah. That's, uh, Derek, we're going to have, have uh, somebody reach out to you because uh, the, the dynamic anchors, you're going to have to make those work. Uh, not just for bulk, but definitely with the network 2.0, because it's absolutely the key to getting that truck routed with the time definite shipments. So, uh, so we'll, we'll have Bob reach out to you, Derek. Uh, it's, it, it is that important that you get it to work. Now, is it a mindset of your drivers? Absolutely. Drivers like to say, that's not my route. Well, the route is whatever goes on that truck that you decide that, that you guys decide to go on that truck. Now, a bunch of preload misloads know that those aren't on his route, but 80% of that route or 90% of that route stays the same every day. Yes, it does. But guess what? 10%, it has to change every day due to either cube or the number of stops. And, and the goal is beneficial to the driver. It gives them a workable load and it gives them an expected return time based off of their productivity. One of the biggest frustrations of drivers and their families, which leads to turnover, is I don't know if I'm coming home at 3 o'clock or if I'm coming home at 6 o'clock. That is a frustration. If I can make it so, guess what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to get home between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock every night probably going to be a more livable situation for the driver and the family. Okay. So uh, once again, I'd encourage you to have a plan. How do you get the plan? You contact Miss Becca uh, and you book that appointment. Once again, you're going to see what your, what FedEx thinks you should make and what you actually think you should make based off of some adjustments. They can. Yes. I see a couple of names in the our attendee list that have already been to a, a session. Or if they wouldn't mind saying if it was worth their time or not. Okay. Like Mr. Sprinkles, if I open up your mic, I don't know if you'll do or not. I don't know if he will or not. There he is. You there you go. Yes. Mr. Sprinkles. Yes. Can you tell the group here just for fun uh, if you thought it was worth coming to this session? And this is actually unplanned and we didn't ask, ask you to talk beforehand or anything like that. So just let us, can you tell us? I will about to, this was not planned. <clears throat> but yes, it was well worth it. Absolutely. You'll and how long have you been a, go ahead. How long have you been a CSP, Andrew? 21 years to the month. Woo! 21 years. And did you learn something uh, just shy of 21 years when you attended the session with Jeff and Becca? Yes. Excellent. Yes, I did. So the point, the point being, it just it's worth it, right? If nothing else, it's a thought exercise, and you, okay, you know, I mean, that's okay, it's good. Thank, thank you for speaking up. But I do have a question. Sure, absolutely. Just because, of where did you get the fourteen routes per BC? I mean, that's who what it, came, who that's came what, up with that number? That's an old FedEx uh, round, round engineered standard. 
you say old, how long is that? Because 10 plus years. But things have changed in 10 plus years, correct? Yeah, but they're so they want they're not gonna necessarily pay they understand the business is getting more complicated, but do you think they're paying you more so you can have more BCEs? Just I mean, in order to man in order to manage and or uh contingency plan. Right. That's why there's the business support system. But the business support system can't go run around either. No, but it can free up folks to do that. That's the point. Uh, we'll, we're just going to tell you that uh, without going too far, um, your friends, your friends, Andrew, mm -hmm. at FedEx think it's a great idea. Let's just put it that way. How's that? Because of what you just said. <laughs> yes. I guess they, after 21 years, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're not my friends. They're your friends. <laughs> Come on. Bob Newman loves you, Andrew. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I it, you know, the, the negotiator or your senior manager might tell you a slightly different number than that 14, but we believe it, it's a, a very, it, we knew it was the engineered standard at one time. They might tell you something slightly different, but it's going to be right in that ballpark. And financially, what we think you would need to pay uh, somebody for that responsibility too. You, you know, if FedEx tells you it's 12, guess what? They might want you to pay less than what we think you, you would have to pay a very astute, I am productive BC. Okay. Anything else, Jeff? Uh, I'm combing the list. I can't, unless I'm missing. I'm missing. Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, I don't know. I see a couple others, but I won't, I won't, uh, there's been other folks that are on this list that have attended and I just, I guess we just need to talk to one. That's fine. But no, other than that, no. Okay. Well, we definitely appreciate everybody's time today. Hopefully you found uh, this insightful to go this deep into what you would receive uh, by, by making this appointment. As uh, Andrew said, there is value in it. There's, there's no doubt about it. Even after 21 years, uh, we, Andrew learned some stuff about his business uh, and guarantee you will learn some stuff about your business and you'll get a starting point so you can talk to FedEx. This is what I believe I can can achieve. Uh, and, you, you know, they they listen uh, somewhat, but as Jeff said, they're going to pay you what they're going to pay you. Uh, unless you can prove them wrong. And the only way you can prove them wrong is with verifiable data. And uh, as, you know, Stephen said, he's been waiting five months. You got to be persistent with it because if, if you're not persistent, you're easy to ignore. That ain't right, but 